Welcome back everyone. Today we're going over the M855 rounds that you see here in my magazine and we're going to test them in the ballistics gel. We're going to test the accuracy of them and then just talk about what I found with them overall. Before we go into the gel and the accuracy testing, let's talk about the actual rounds themselves. I picked this stuff up over at AIM Surplus and this is what it comes in. It comes in these 300 round packs marked 855 on the front here. Also note that it is a 5.56 round, not a 2.23, so ensure that your rifle is chambered for it. The vast majority of ARs in America are uh, made in Denmark. And uh, for those that are unaware, the 8.55 is also uh, the SS-109 round. It's the same, it just depends if it's the NATO designation or not. Taking a look at the actual rounds themselves, you'll see it does have the standard mill spec annealing there on the brass. The brass is fully reloadable, high quality brass. Uh, one thing that a lot of folks are going to notice though is it doesn't have the green tip there on there like we're used to seeing here in the states. Um, reason for that is the green tips on there because just a quick and dirty history of the round. Uh, this round was developed for the saw program and uh, over the course of testing they realized they needed to change the twist rate in the rifles and uh, so these were designed to work in the one and seven twist rifles so they marked them with the green tip here in the US so that way the soldiers could designate it between um, the 55 grain loads and the 62 grain loads which you see here um, the 62 grains were supposed to be the one and seven twist rifles while there were still some old uh, m16s floating around that were one and twelve twist and they wanted to make sure that the soldiers weren't using these and those and that's why it was designated now a lot of countries didn't adopt the this round until after the one and twelve twist rifles were kind of obsolete and those countries never had them so they never had to mark it because they never had to distinguish the round if that makes sense kind of quick and dirty history there for you guys but it is a uh, 62 grain steel core copper uh, jacketed bullet and it is not a penetrating bullet a lot of people say it is a armor penetrator um, that's kind of a fallacy out there it will penetrate into steel a little bit I believe according to the uh, military spec it'll penetrate three millimeters into steel at 600 meters but um, it is not a designated AP round so just to clarify that real quick ballistic coefficient of this round is uh, 0.151 and um, this particular round, in this lot, I should say, is being sold at AIM, like I mentioned. I believe the, the brick here of 300 rounds is $130, and you can buy a 900-round brick, in the, or 900 rounds, which I guess is three of them. That comes in a 50 caliber uh, storage can, and uh, you do get that along with it, and I believe that is $380. Bucks. But let's uh, step outside and see how this sucker is actually going to perform coming out of a gun. the wound track as it entered the block you can see right around the four inch mark it starts to tumble a good bit turns a little bit sideways coming up here and then down here right at the 21 inch mark it exit the block let's do this one more time and see if we can get a different result well unfortunately the bad news is it keeps tumbling out of the block and I think that's gonna happen this one Tumbled out right there at the 14 inch mark, and it also kind of jacked up my little makeshift target stand here, but that's pretty much what you're going to get with this ammo. It's going to tumble and penetrate a good bit. Time for some accuracy testing here. We got the uh, V7 Systems barrel, a very accurate barrel, and the target out there at 100 meters. We have a slight uh, corner value wind crossing a little bit here, but not too bad. I think it shouldn't affect things too much. So. We'll go ahead and start putting some rounds down range and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this stuff. Let's go check it out. Well, we're not here at the target. And these are the four shots we just had. As you can see, it's about a three inch group. Pretty much what I expected from 855 mil spec type ammo. Um, we did have a little bit to the left. I suspect that was due to that crosswind we talked about. But three inch group, about what I expected. 
Well, as you guys have seen today, this uh, 855 made over in Denmark seems to be every bit as good as the 855 that we see here in the U.S. It is a decent all-around round for uh, built and designed, obviously, for military use, but a lot of civilians do like it because it's a known quantity. You know what you're getting with it. You get a published uh, spec. There's been a ton of research done on the ballistics of it. Incidentally, as you guys saw in that gel block, it did tumble a good bit. Um, generally, most folks will say the... The threshold, if you will, for tumbling is right around 2,500 feet per second, and out of a 16-inch barrel, which you saw there today at 25 meters, which is what we were shooting at, we're easily within that, as you guys saw in the chronograph test. So just make sure you do the math if you're using this for defensive use or hunting use, and make sure you're going to be within that threshold um, if you plan on getting those terminal ballistics that you saw out there today. But uh, the 855 is just a reasonable, all-around good round. It comes, incidentally, this stuff, the Danish stuff, comes sealed in these sealed plastic cases, and it comes on uh, plastic stripper clips. So excellent, excellent ammo to store if you guys want to store your ammo for long-term use, uh, whatever it may be. I mean, it's a pretty good way to have it come. But as always, guys, if you have any questions about this ammo or anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can feel free to post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. But as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.